Hey guys, welcome back to Chaos Core Tech. My name's Garrett, and today we are going to be making an egg spinner. Now, I'm sure you've seen these things around. Um, they're basically just a thing that rotates an egg decently fast so you can draw on it with markers and make some cool designs for kids to do around Easter. And I thought it'd be fun to try and make one of my own. And that's really what I wanted to accomplish here was um, get a little bit of experience using electronics and motors and just mechanical things in general. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my attempt to make an egg spinner. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. So there are three major parts of this build that need to work. The first is the motor that will turn the wheels, the wheels themselves that will turn the egg, and the spot for the batteries. I'm also gonna throw in a switch that will turn the power on and off, but that'll be mostly in the wiring aside from just all, all hole to put the switch in. So um, it's pretty straightforward. It'll probably just take a few iterations to make sure that everything works well. So step one is picking out the motor. Um, I decided to use these TT motors from Adafruit. I'll put a link in the description um, if you guys wanna check them out for yourselves. They're pretty basic geared DC motors, so they're easy to drive straight from batteries. And as a bonus, they have a rectangular shaft, so it's very easy to fit a 3D print on it. A lot of DC motors just have a perfectly cylindrical shaft that makes it more difficult to attach parts to it. And it literally just has two pins, basically a power in and a ground. Um, it takes three to six volts. So for this one, I'm going to be using three AA batteries, which will get us 4.5 volts right in the middle. Step two is adding the wheels. My thought was with these is that I'll just put some rubber bands around the wheels to give them a little extra grip on the egg. I'm going to have two axles um, one will attach to the motor and be the driving force to spin the egg. The other will mostly be a stabilizer and it will freely rotate. Also, each axle will have two wheels on it to give the egg four points of contact and hopefully that will be enough to keep the egg in one place as it spins. The third thing is adding a space for the batteries. Um, now, I originally planned on getting an actual battery pack that I could just toss in there, but I ran out of time. So instead, I created a slot to put three AA batteries right next to the motor. Then it's gonna be pretty simple to connect up some wires to the ends of the batteries and get the whole thing going. The last thing is just adding a slot to the box for an on-off switch. These are the switches I'm gonna be using. I'll put a link to those in the description as well. So I just measured them and added a hole for it. So now I wanna talk about the process of printing it and going through the different iterations. Um, all in all, I ended up going through about six iterations, each one adding complexity and tweaking the sizes of things to make it run more smoothly. Um, this was the first print. I just wanted to test the rotation of the wheels. So I um, printed the axles and the stands to hold them, but I was an idiot and failed to utilize my toddler toy training of what shapes fit into what holes. So um, I ended up creating rectangular pegs to force the wheels to turn on, but I put them in between cylinders that are too big, um, so I couldn't get the wheels over the cylinders onto the rectangular parts. Smart, I know. So iteration two, um, I tried a three-part axle, so each rectangular part would be on the end, and it would just have a peg that would go into the next piece. Um, that way I could put the wheels on and connect the pieces up afterwards. Um, this ended up not working either, mostly because the axles are pretty small, so the connection points were very weak and it just didn't hold together very well. On iteration three, I finally came up with a better idea and I just had a fully rectangular axle with a cylindrical cap on the end of it to hold it in place as it rotates. This worked much better. Um, along with that, I widened the stands to reduce the amount um, that the wheels could slip around on the axle. Now they pretty much stay where they need to be. Um, and I also added a little holder for the motor. Iteration four is where it really started to come together. Um, I added the battery slot, the switch slot, and I expanded on the motor holder. Um, this one got really close. The only real issues were uh, mostly in the tolerance department. Um, also, the motor still slipped around a bit too much, so for iteration 5, I added a few more walls around the motor area, made the batteries and the switch slots a little bit bigger, um, and pushed the axles a bit further apart. So for iteration 5, I added a few more walls to the motor area, made the battery and switch slots slightly bigger, and pushed the axles uh, apart a bit further. I noticed that the egg was bouncing around a bit on top, and I noticed that it was sitting um, really, really far up. So I thought widening the area that the egg sits in would help. So it would sit just a little bit lower in there um, and basically have more um, grip on the motors. 
So uh, I did that and then iteration six was just adjusting the tolerances. I think I made it just a little bit wider and um, tweaked the motor slot. So um, it is finally where I need it to be. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes covering all sorts of different topics. There's a premium membership that gives you full access to the classes. So if you're trying to pick up a new creative skill, Skillshare can help you with all of the skills you want to learn. It's a great place to fuel your creativity and point you in the right direction. For example, I've really been wanting to sharpen my drawing abilities lately, and something that's crucial for both 2D drawing and 3D modeling is knowing anatomy. Luckily, Jazza has a new series called the 28 Day Drawing Challenge, Anatomy for Illustration and Comics. He's really good at breaking things down and demonstrating how to apply these ideas to your work. Also, I know that a lot of people with 3D printers want to learn how to 3D model, and there are a ton of 3D modeling courses for a wide variety of programs like Blender, Maya, ZBrush, and even CAD programs. So whether you're trying to learn something new or improve your knowledge on an existing skill, Skillshare is an extremely useful tool. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first 1,000 people to click the link in the description below or use the code CHAOSCORTEC will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare so you can explore your creativity. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring this video. Now on to the wiring, and luckily for us, the wiring is extremely simple for this. Um, I lined the batteries up so they just need a wire on each end. One of the wires goes to the peg on the on and off switch. It doesn't matter which one. Um, then a wire goes from the other peg on the switch to one of the pins on the motor. Then you just need a third wire going from the other pin on the motor to the other end of the batteries. And that completes the circuit. Um, and like I said, it doesn't matter which order any of this is connected up in. This is just um, how I did it. So now I can turn the switch on and off and the motor starts spinning. Um, now to put an egg in there. Uh, first, I tested with real eggs and it worked pretty good. You'll probably want to hard boil them though, uh, especially around kids because you don't want a broken egg mess to clean up. Um, we actually skipped that step and got some fake eggs. I'll put a link in the description to them. They work pretty good. Um, you have to pull the little, um, there's a little string attached to them. But you can pull that out and there's a hole on the end of the egg. Um, and they're really, really, really light. So we're probably gonna add something in there to weigh them down. I was thinking about putting some sand on the inside. Um, we'll see what we end up doing there. Also, I should mention that I gloss over the electronics a bit here. Um, I'm leaving a lot of it up to whoever is building it. You'll need some soldering abilities um, and just some knowledge on how to make sure that it's safe with no exposed wires, especially if kids are gonna be using it. Uh, so if you guys are gonna be doing this and you're not very experienced, make sure to look up some videos on how to solder correctly and um, you know how to cover up those solder points and make sure that they're not exposed. Now I'm kind of rushed getting this video out, so I don't have time to get it all put together and make it presentable for this video. So I'm gonna be, end up making a few more adjustments before I put the files up. Um, so it might be just a little bit after this video comes out, but I will put a link in the description when I have it up. Until then, you can follow us on Twitter um, if you're interested in any updates on it. I'll also be adding a cover to it in a fun Eastery shape so, um, so that all of the internals aren't exposed and you just have a little slot for the egg to sit in. And I will also be adding a version with no slot for the batteries because I know that a lot of people who build this will have their own solution for powering it. So I don't want the battery slot to be in the way if you guys have another idea. All right, well, that's gonna be it for this video. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. And if you end up building one of these, tweet me some pictures and some pictures of the eggs you guys create. Also, I will be getting back to the marble project, um, hopefully in the next video. And this was actually kind of a test to um, really test out these motors because I think these are what I'm going to be using for the marble video. So um, we'll see. But thank you for watching. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and making it possible. And until next time, keep creating.